Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. Today in this video, I will be explaining you the mechanism of adipose tissue lipolysis. Now the adipose tissue lipolysis occurs whenever person gets into fasting condition, when there is increase in glucagon, and also when the person is in fight, flight or fright reaction, so there can be adipose tissue lipolysis that is mediated by a hormone called epinephrine. And also when the person is in stressful situation where there is increase in the cortisol, so which is the potent glucocorticoid, that can also increase lipolysis. And also growth hormone to a certain extent, it induces adipose tissue lipolysis. Now let's see what all the mechanism for each of them. Now especially I will be concentrating on how the adipose tissue lipolysis is done by glucagon, epinephrine and cortisol. Now the adipose tissue which is stored beneath our skin, if you consider this as the adipose tissue here, so it has triacyl glycerol. So when the person gets into fasting condition like 2 to 3 hours after meals, there is elevation of glucagon. And this elevated glucagon, it is going to go and bind to glucagon receptor. So, glucagon receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. As it is shown in the figure here, glucagon receptor is a G protein coupled receptor and it is going to activate adenylyl cyclase enzyme. Now, the activated adenylyl cyclase enzyme, it is going to increase cyclic AMP and that cyclic AMP is going to further activate protein kinase A enzyme. Now this PKA or protein kinase A enzyme, it is going to phosphorylate an enzyme called hormone sensitive lipase. Now this hormone sensitive lipase enzyme, it is going to break down triacylglycerol and release free fatty acids. And also it is going to release glycerol molecule. So free fatty acids and glycerol, it will be released from triacylglycerol from the action of hormone sensitive lipase enzyme. This is how glucagon is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acids and glycerol molecule and these free fatty acids gets into the bloodstream and it will be carried by albumin to all the other tissues. Glycerol will go to the liver and it will undergo gluconeogenesis to make glucose. Now when the person is in stressful situation like fight, fight or flight reaction or when the person is uh, in stressful situation where there is release of cortisol or glucocorticoid. So how lipolysis will go on. So, epinephrine, it will bind to epinephrine receptor. Epinephrine binding to epinephrine receptor which is also a G protein coupled receptor. And this G protein coupled like 7 transmembrane G protein coupled receptor so it is going to again activate adenylyl cyclase enzyme as it is shown in the figure again. It, uh, adenylyl cyclase furthermore it is going to increase cyclic AMP levels and the cyclic AMP levels they are going to further activate protein kinase A enzyme. And protein kinase A is going to phosphorylate hormone sensitive lipase and hormone sensitive lipase it becomes active. And active hormone sensitive lipase is going to again break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol molecule. And that's what is lipolysis mediated by epinephrine. So the mechanism of glucagon and epinephrine is very similar. Both of them will bind to G protein coupled receptor, activate adenylyl cyclase enzyme, further activate protein kinase A and then that protein kinase A is going to activate hormone sensitive lipase hormone sensitive lipase is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol molecule. Now let's come to cortisol. What is the effect of cortisol on triacylglycerol breakdown? Now the mechanism of cortisol is little different here compared to glucagon and epinephrine. Cortisol is a steroid hormone so it is going to get into the cytoplasm because we are the, they will bind to cytoplasmic or nuclear receptors. So the glucocorticoid or the cortisol, so it is going to go and bind to glucocoid, glucocorticoid receptor inside the cytoplasm. So cortisol will go and bind to glucocorticoid receptor. And now this glucocorticoid receptor will go and bind to glucocorticoid response element. These are the genes segment present in a DNA 
because steroid hormones they will go and interact with the DNA after binding with their uh, nuclear receptors or the cytoplasmic receptors. Now the uh, glucocorticoid receptor element once it is activated so there will be transcription going on and that is mRNA is made and that mRNA is going to make a protein and what kind of protein is synthesized here. So there are different uh, molecules are made uh, by binding with the glucocorticoid receptors. One of the protein that is binding here is uh, angiopoietin like 4 protein. So the protein is angiopoietin like 4 protein. So what this angiopoietin like 4 protein does? Angiopoietin like 4 protein so it is going to go and bind to its receptors on the surface of adipose sites. So and it is going to activate protein kinase A enzyme, PKA enzyme, adenyl cyclase enzyme and that adenyl cyclase is going to activate protein kinase A enzyme and that protein kinase A enzyme is going to activate hormone sensitive lipase and hormone sensitive lipase is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol molecule. So this is another mechanism of cortisol how it is going to activate hormone sensitive lipase enzyme. So cortisol binding to glucocorticoid receptors in the cytoplasm going into nucleus activating glucocorticoid response elements on the DNA transcription of mRNA for a protein is transcribed and you know, translated into a protein that is angiopoietin like 4 protein which will come and bind to its receptor and that is activating adenyl cyclase protein kinase A and ultimately activating hormone sensitive lipase. Not only cortisol does this, cortisol is going to go and sensitize epinephrine receptors and also what it does, it is going to inhibit phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme. So glucocorticoids, so they are going to inhibit phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme and thereby when the phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme is inhibited, so the cyclic AMP levels will be maintained at high levels, cyclic AMP. Adenyl cyclase is going to increase cyclic AMP and that cyclic AMP is the one which is going to activate protein kinase A and that protein kinase A is going to keep hormone sensitive lipase active by phosphorylating it. Okay. Now and also note that glucocorticoid they are going to increase Adipose tissue triacylglycerol lipase enzyme. Adipose tissue triacylglycerol lipase. This is an enzyme which is induced by glucocorticoids. So whenever glucocorticoids are bind to glucocorticoid receptor, so the transcription of a protein called adeno, adipose tissue triacylglycerol lipase is activity is increased. That means triacylglycerol is broken down into free fatty acid and the glycerol molecule. This is all about uh, lipolysis. I hope this video has helped you in understanding this concept. For regular updates and also for more videos like this, so make sure you click that subscription button so that you get updates as, when, as and when I upload videos. Thanks again and uh, see you in my next video.